Okay, good morning. This is uh, Mechanical Engineering 566, the acoustics course. Um, what we will do is we will meet on Tuesdays 9 until uh, 11.50 every Tuesday. And uh, we will work out each Tuesday three units, okay, 50 minutes each. So we'll have 9 to 9.50, 10 to 10.50, 11 to 11.50. And for each topic, we will, I will try to cover something specific. So at the end of each unit, you should come away with having learned something. Okay, and I will try to uh, develop this um, schedule for you in the next, uh, probably before next week. Okay, now acoustics. What is acoustics? Um, there are a number of different uh, definitions of acoustics, one of which is perturbations and propagation of perturbations. If you disturb a medium, how it propagates in that in that medium. Now, this medium can be gas, like air, and that's the sound that you hear, which is normally what you would associate acoustics with. But it can be in liquids, like water, underwater sounds, or it can be solids, okay? When I hit this, although you hear it, waves are also propagating, and different types are propagating in the solids. Now, one of the things that you may or may not think about is the frequency of sounds. So, uh, so the frequencies usually we call it cycle per second or hertz can be from zero to 10 to the 9 hertz in air and 10 to the 13 hertz oops, in solids. <laughs> you might say these are pretty high frequencies, as you can see, 10 to the 9, 10 to 13. <clears throat> Do you know why it is not higher than that in an air medium? Why isn't it 10 to the 10 or 10 to the 11? That's the frequency of the molecular collisions. <laughs> That's the limit, okay? So at the moment, in air, molecules are colliding with each other at a frequency approximately 10 to the 9 hertz. And sound waves, as they propagate, is a propagation of these collisions, okay? So above that, there's no sound wave, as we would define it. But in, uh, gen what I'd like to do now is uh, also just give you a very brief description of what we mean by uh, infrasound and ultrasound. Of course, infra means below, under, okay, less than, and ultra is beyond. Okay, ultrasound usually defines frequencies over 20 kilohertz. And ultrasound is usually below 20 hertz. And the, uh, the values in between are the sonic frequencies. Okay, ultrasound would be very, very, sorry, it's the other way around. Infrasound is less than 20 hertz, ultrasound is higher than 20 kilohertz. So these are the uh, uh, sounds that, uh, sound waves that propagate with frequencies that are uh, much higher. Now what I want to do is uh, give you an overall picture of what acoustics is, okay?
Now, if you go to the journal of the Acoustical Society, of America, <laughs> you'll see that there are papers published in a number of different areas. What I'm going to do is I made this up and I'm going to draw this so you can arrange your uh, papers accordingly, okay? So in acoustics then, what we have is, um, see this is the general topic of acoustics. A very common topic is linear acoustics and I will try to explain each one of these one by one. And then of course you have nonlinear acoustics we have arrow acoustics and atmospheric propagation. We have underwater sounds. Structural acoustics and vibration. These are all very distinctly different topics. And then we have a discipline called noise, its effects. and control. We have architectural acoustics, transduction, measurements instrumentation this is not all okay on the other side there's really no other side but uh, bioacoustics you leave enough room, I will explain very briefly what they are and you can take notes. Uh, musical acoustics. And instruments. Speech processing. and recognition. Speech perception. Speech reproduction. Physiological acoustics, all 
ultrasonics. Quantum acoustics. Physical effects of si uh, sound. And finally, signal processing. You can see that when one says acoustics, and if you respond, oh yes, I study acoustics, you need to clarify which part of uh, the general topic of acoustics you should be, uh, or you are studying, okay? Um, what we will do in our class is uh, <clears throat> cover some of these, okay? I will put a box around those topics that we will be covering. Linear acoustics, a little bit of atmospheric acoustics, structural acoustics and vibrations, a little bit of noise, probably a lecture or two on architectural acoustics. Um, just a lecture or two on physiological acoustics. Yes, we might uh, talk a little bit about microphones, sensors, etc., and a little bit about signals. Okay, but the weight that we will give in this course will be on these topics. And what are they? <laughs> Before I go further, what we mean by bioacoustics is mainly um, acoustical properties of uh, biological materials. And how do you identify, how do you measure their properties, their impedance, etc. Okay. Of course, musical acoustics in itself is a very large area. Musical acoustics includes uh, instruments from wind instruments to a uh, violin. In fact, uh, you might find it interesting that to date, there is no way to model a violin, okay? It's just impossible. You know the uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of old classic violins. We don't know how to make them again because we do not quite understand what the properties of the uh, design as well as the uh, wood it is made out of and so on. So these are very open areas. <laughs> you know, there are three sub areas related to speech. As you know, I remember many, many years ago going to the Acoustical Society meetings, they were presenting new discoveries, uh, discoveries that automatically would have a microphone be directed to somebody who starts speaking, just automatically, directional microphones. <laughs> now you know you, there's, a, there's software available that if you just speak into the, uh, let's say, the processor in the computer, it will convert it into a word file, okay? And that's done through speech perception and uh, speech processing recognition and so on. Physiological acoustics usually relates to uh, auditory system, okay? How hearing takes place, modeling of cochlea, inner ear, and hearing properties. Of course, ultrasonics, as I mentioned, physical acoustics, these are the uh, very high frequency waves and their effects on other systems. Now, Linear acoustics, uh, let me see if I can use this part. And this is going to start now getting into uh, the plan of, uh, of this course. Yeah. 
in linear acoustics, we do cover wave, wave propagation. And this wave propagation can be in the air or in solids, but we'll treat the solid part a little bit differently. And the, the subjects like reflection, refraction, and diffraction. And I'll try to explain those in a moment. And then scattering. Velocity and attenuation. Attenuation means decrease of amplitude damping. Attenuation of waves. standing waves resonances normal modes then we talk about waveguides Wave propagation in tubes, ducts. Transient radiation. Steady state radiation, then we want to talk about impedances. Just like in electrical systems or mechanical systems, there are acoustic impedances that are also very important. A key in all of these will be boundary conditions. And as we come to this topic, you'll see that this is a very difficult subject. How do you define real boundary conditions when sound waves interact with a wall, with the ceiling, with all of these, uh, let's say, uh, instruments or uh, uh, devices that are hanging on the, uh, on the ceiling? Um, and finally, interaction. of sound with its environment. The other important topic is structural acoustics and these are as you can imagine coupled together because sound comes from someplace and vibrations and uh, here we will talk about vibrating strings rods beams Membranes, plates. Not in so much detail that this becomes a vibrations course, but enough that it feeds into the acoustic radiation that such vibrations cause, okay? Um, then uh, scattering, 
by elastic structures. Impact and impact reduction. Radiation by vibrating media. Oh, sorry, vibrating structures. Um, these are the two big topics that we will cover. Um, in the other areas, for example, in, uh, in uh, physiological acoustics, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, hearing mechanisms, okay? What happens? The three little, uh, what's called the ossicular chain the impedance matching role that they have between air and the cochlea, the inner ear, which is full of fluid. Air to fluid, you need to match the impedance. So we'll talk about that a little bit and what it means, how is uh, sound processed. It's essentially a processor, a Fourier transform of the signal that comes in and sends it to the uh, uh, cortex. And uh, we will have a lecture probably devoted to aeroacoustics. How does sound propagate over large distances? What does it mean uh, if there is a thermal uh, um, gradient, okay? For example, sound propagating over water is different than sound propagating over land, okay? That's only because of the temperature dependence of the gradient changes in the atmosphere as a result of reflections. Because speed of sound is dependent, which we'll talk about on temperature, then it can go up or it can actually go down. Okay, the way the sound is traveling. So these are very interesting and uh, helpful topics that uh, uh, we'll talk about. Do you have any questions about anything? What we want to, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, today we'll start with the concept of oscillations. Uh, you probably know this, but we're just going to review all of this briefly and uh, we'll try to uh, use um, complex variables in expressing a lot of uh, these equations because we want to be able to develop energy equations, etc. Power equations and use of complex variables is, uh, makes it a lot easier, okay? So I will transition into these, talk about uh, today, talk about um, uh, description of oscillations uh, as well as uh, uh, how a linear spring behaves. Any questions about anything? You should feel free to interrupt me at any time. Don't hesitate. Okay? All right. Can I erase? All right. Let's talk about oscillations. This is very, very basic, but I just want to review these to get all of, all of ourselves into a... a into the, uh, on the same page, uh, such, as, such as it is. All right, let's uh, talk about a periodic motion. Periodic motion repeats itself. That's the definition. And the repetition period is time, in usually written in seconds. And the frequency with which it repeats is 1 over t cycle per second. Otherwise referred to as hertz. Planets move around with a 
periodic motion. They repeat their own. A pendulum moves with a period. And in these, the uh, frequency of motion can be time dependent. Okay? But for a harmonic motion, harmonic motion, frequency does not depend on time. For periodic motion, it can. It doesn't have to, but it can. But for harmonic motion, it does not. So in some ways, if you consider a point moving in a circle in a counterclockwise and the radius of the circle is A, okay? And at any moment, the angle it makes with the x-axis is omega t. So we can describe the uh, position on x position of P on x-axis as A cosine omega t. Okay? And that would be at time t, it would correspond to that. Now, if omega t makes a complete cycle, that would be 2 pi, and that would give us the period of that motion. Okay. And the frequency we can write as 2 pi over t. Now, note that this is radian per second, OK? And uh, it is related to frequency f in terms of hertz by, uh, through 2 pi. Similarly, velocity would be its time derivative. And acceleration What this shows to us is in a harmonic motion, in a harmonic motion, acceleration is proportional to the displacement. Okay? So if you have a particle. such as mass that's suspended from a coil spring slightly, okay, slightly, when you let it go, 
the force that's acting against it is proportional to this displacement that overcomes the inertial force. You have a question. Right. But uh, when I look at the equations, uh, radial frequency comes from uh, time. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, it doesn't. Radial frequency is constant. This is constant. OK? This is always constant. You can call it 3, 5. It doesn't matter. It's constant. <laughs> In other words, during this rotation, See, when this is rotating, it rotates at a constant speed, OK? Now, if it were changing, slowing down, repeat, then that would be omega dependent on time. And in fact, the uh, planet's motion or Earth's motion changes its speed, OK? Because it's an elliptical motion. <laughs> and that would be a non-constant omega. That's a periodic motion, but not harmonic. harmonic Omega is constant. Where do you see it depends on time you mean this? Oh, well, what this says is omega, um, the position of P at any given time is determined speed times the time. So at omega T1, it will be here. T2, it will be there, and so on. When T is equal to... Uh, or where omega t is equal to pi, meaning it comes all the way here, that time will be just a period. But that's all. OK. Any other questions? OK. So, uh, so when a particle is, again, displaced from its position, what is holding it back? is proportional to the displacement, as you can see, OK? And when you let it go, the inertial force will be opposed by this. So the solution of this is going to give us the uh, harmonic motion solutions. But before we get to it, let me just uh, express in general, just continue with this, this being time and this being the displacement. So the next thing we want to, uh, oh, before I do that, um, yes, this uh, we said a cosine omega t. OK. If we want this signal to start when from a zero point, OK? at t1, I can rewrite this equation okay. now you can see t minus t1 0 actually that's not, um, not 0 but from 1 okay T minus T1, 0 will give you the uh, uh, A, which would be the maximum value here. What I'm really trying to get at here is express omega T minus omega T1 a phase information. OK, this we call the phase, phase angle, which would be the time delay. OK. Um, a couple of things. We said velocity is um, <sighs> sp 
speed will be its absolute value. And then I have the average speed. Average these brackets meaning time average. Okay, these are important quantities because when you get into acoustics, vibrations, when you start making energy, me energy measurements and such, uh, we will do them in terms of uh, average quantities. And the way we obtain such average quantities is by taking an average over half a period. So A omega sine omega t is the absolute value. And if we integrate it over half a period, then we do have 2 over pi omega a, which actually gives us 2 over pi u max. Now, these are, these are significant numbers, 2 over pi u max. That would be the uh, average speed of oscillations. <laughs> then another important quantity is mean square value. And the mean square value is average of the square, average of the square of the signal itself. And this, does, this applies to all sorts of different signals, acoustic measurements, pressures, velocity, acceleration, etc. In this case, we're expressing it in terms of uh, velocity. And that is an integral over one time period of the signal. And if we do. Uh, make the substitutions, we do see that the mean square value is square root of the max divided by 2. And finally, in these definitions, one last expression is root mean square. And uh, many of you have, of course, come across RMS value before, and how you make measurements and such. And the RMS value is essentially a square root of um, and that gives us u max over 2. OK, so these are just some definitions of uh, quantities, amplitudes, and they're all uh, driven by the need for measurements. Because when you use instrumentation, which consists of electrical circuitry, OK, these are the types of uh, circuitry-driven uh, results that we will get, OK? RMS value is an important quantity. Mean square value is an important quantity because uh, they relate to actual amplitudes over time. See, when you have a signal like this one, if you take an average of it, what will it give you? Zero. It gives no information, OK? And that's why what you want to do is look at the uh, mean square values, because that gives you an amplitude value. And if you want to get something like this, then you can take a square root of that again. And the other thing is mean square values are related to energy content, OK? Second order u squared, like mv squared 2 or kx squared. OK, these are energy-related quantities. OK, let's uh, shift gears and just talk just a little bit about complex variables, complex amplitudes. These are all in preparation for the uh, next set of uh, studies that we will have. Let's see.
Okay. Let's take this displacement one more time and express it in terms of its amplitude and cosine omega t minus phi. Okay, so for a given for a given frequency, okay, amplitude and the phase uniquely describe the position. Okay, for a given frequency, amplitude and phase uniquely describe the uh, position. So some of the information that we will use are, number one, Euler's identity. How many of you know what Euler's identity is? One, two, aha, three, yes, oh good, okay. You probably do know, all right, but uh, I'll, I'll write it down. Well, you, sh you may not know it by its name. Um, now, do you know? Okay, of course, yes. And uh, similarly, we can say and these come in very handy okay. in, in developing some of these equations. So what we want to do is try to express this equation that was written in time in terms of complex amplitudes. As you can see, the uh, R here refers to the real part of what's in the brackets. And of course, the uh, complex part of this is cosine, as we understood it. So that's it that we'll start writing now in terms of this expression. But if we continue this, And this is the uh, complex amplitude. Okay, so again, we said here that for any frequency, phase and amplitude uniquely define the signal. Here we can say for any given frequency, complex amplitude by itself uniquely defines the signal. Okay? And uh, those of you who have had some experience with complex variables, you'll see that this is a very helpful uh, um, way of expressing wave equations. And, uh, another way to consider this is a position up here with the, uh, it's like the real and imaginary axis of a complex plane, okay? And uh, the radial distance to the point is the absolute uh, xi and the absolute value, and of course phi is the uh, 
angle from that point. So if you multiply a complex number by i, what is i again? If we write it in terms of uh, these equations, it is uh, cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. That's really i. <laughs> OK? So multiplying a complex value by i means you're adding a phase of pi over 2. Or if you multiply it by minus i, you're subtracting a phase of pi over 2. These are just simple reminders because we'll face these as, uh, as we go along. Okay, let's take a, a five minute break.